how to pass CMA US in just one attempt? Well, this is the question that I get in all of my webinars. Can we pass CMA US in one attempt? How difficult it is? Well, whatever is the difficulty level, well, of course, you can pass it in just one attempt. There are some things that you need to keep in mind while studying for the CMA US exam. Some of the things I will be discussing here in this video, four things that you need to keep in mind to pass CMA US in just one attempt. The first one is that do not indulge in selective studying, guys. We as Indians have done this, right? Right from our schooling to our college, Whenever we felt that, uh, you know, let me take you back to the memory lane. Whenever we felt, imagine your uh, academic days. Whenever you felt that uh, some topics will be slightly less in weightage, what did we used to do? We used to leave it for the exam and we used to focus on more important elements. That, that's known as selective studying. In this exam, you cannot do it. Why? Because the exam is a dynamic pattern. What do we mean by dynamic pattern is suppose you are studying for important areas, fine. As long as you're getting the important areas, you'll be answering it correctly, fine. As soon as the uh, examiner, as soon as the computer gives you a question from those areas which you left and you stumble on the answers, that's where the computer will know that this is the area you're weak at. And you'll start getting questions from those areas. And hence we say, do not indulge in selective studying. That was tip number one. Number two is that practice as much as you can, guys. Question banks, mock exams. See, it's very important to practice. Whatever you are studying has to have a practical application. You need to know how the exam questions will look like. And that's how your mind will get trained to answer those exam questions, to think on the lines that the examiner expects you to do, all right? So practice test, you have access to a lot of questions through a question bank. Do questions, practice as much as you can. Uh, give mock tests. And when we are talking about giving mock tests, this, I tell this to a, a, the students in every course of mine, that whenever you are giving a mock exam, do not give it just for the sake of giving it. Assume that you are sitting in the exam hall let this mock exam happen in a simulated exam environment, guys. And this is extremely important. You will get to know a lot of different things. You will get to know the time management. You will get to know, okay, this that's the area I need to focus more on. I need to increase my speed, right? Your mind will get trained to think quickly because now the mind knows that the clock is ticking. All right, that was tip number two. Tip number three, guys. Now, the next tip is very, very important. And you might have heard people saying this, that, you know, don't cram, understand. Now, it's very easy for us to cram certain things. For example, if I, if I ask you the formula of current ratio, that's it. you know, it's current assets on current liabilities. It's very easy to cram it up. But the difference between a, a normal candidate and a successful candidate is that the successful candidate will go beyond this formula. If I ask you, what are the components included in current assets? You should be aware of that. Of course, you can memorize it. Now the game changes when there is an exam question asking you that, okay, suppose there was a person and that person paid $100 through cash to the accounts payable. The person paid accounts payable $100 in cash. And now what is the change on the current ratio? Now that's where if you have just memorized the formula, that's where you need to, that's where you get stumbled on, right? So you have to go beyond the formula. You have to think practically that if you put yourself in the shoes, how would the things happen? What would you practically see happening in terms of the components? What components will change? And so that's where the game changes, all right? So number three was don't just cram, guys. Understand. And one final tip for you in this video is that be consistent. When I say be consistent, see, it will not happen in a way that, you know, just two days prior to the exam, you start studying and you study for, let's say, 14 hours a day. That's very difficult to pass that exam this way. But the game changes when even if you're studying, let's say, two hours in a day, 
and over a period of 3 to 4 months you are actually being consistent every day you are denoting uh, you are devoting 3 to 4 hours in a day or 2 to 3 hours in a day or 1 and a half hour to 2 hours whatever suits i will not be able to tell you that okay this is the number of hours that you should denote because that is different for everyone i might be successful i might be it might be comfortable for me to just study for 2 hours in a day whereas you might need a little more effort or you might be doing it in 1 hour and i will need 4 hours to do the same right so each of us knows the level that we are at each of us knows that what's best for us all right so stay consistent guys one more thing one request rather if you like this video guys please hit that like button subscribe to our channel and help us reach out to the audiences